All right guys, it's literally been close to a year since I fired this up because I had the 36 inch Gravely Pro Stance all last year for a demo, so I really didn't use this mower much. Man, let's see if it even starts up. Put her on, choke her up a couple times, like somebody ran over something. That's the issue right there. So many moving parts. I had it in a drive, it needs to be in neutral. That's my apologies to you guys. <sighs> now let's continue yanking on this cord, which is something you know I really like doing. thousand years later so after about five minutes we finally got it to turn over I know it has to do a lot with it sitting for a long time but it also has a lot to do with me having engaged on the hydros while I was trying to start it first probably flooded it out a little bit but let's get it out of here Randy? six hours later I just felt you go over I'm on your lawn, yep, you know we got it going on It's hot outside, but we're grinding on From dusk to dawn You make me feel like home You turn around I feel the breeze over me your dreams unfold let it come around and let it breathe over me what's going on guys andy here cut and clean lawn care and i'm going to give you guys my full in-depth review on the encore 36 inch premier pro hydro walk behind let's check it out all right guys, so this is the Encore Premier Pro Hydro Walk Behind 36. Now, when I first started my business, I started with a five by eight trailer and a craftsman riding lawnmower. I'm not even kidding you. There's no such thing as embarrassment. Like people think, oh, why are you running equipment like that? It's making me money. Those were my goals, That's my that was my drive, is to keep money coming in. I just had a kid, we just had a son. Get out there and do other stuff. That kind of thought process. And with the money I made with that setup, I went out and I purchased this mower. Now, looking back on myself from where I am at this point in life from where I was then in my business, I would have told myself to look at a couple other options, but it was in my price range. It was a lot cheaper. It could do this stuff. Cheaper doesn't mean better, man. Sometimes you gotta bite the bullet and spend that money and there's a reason for that. And we'll go through a lot of those reasons on here. But, Something I always tell everybody about this machine is it's my best, worst purchase I have ever made in my business. It's the best because at the time it got me into every freaking property I wanted to do. If there was a property that I had a chance of making on money, I could do it. You got a small gate, I can get in there. You got a big yard, I can still do it. It's gonna take me a while, but I can do it. Put the sulky on here, ride your way around for an hour and make your money, which is good. But at the same time, you're not really factoring in the amount of wear and tear you put on your body day in and day out on some of these properties, especially on a sulky. You don't have knees like you think you do. When you hit a pothole, you hit a pothole and it hurts. And those wheels can be expensive as the line goes up. Uh, a lot more moving parts on this machine. But like I was saying, it got me into every yard and I was able to make the money. Now I'll go back and start talking about the fatigue and what I was talking about. This machine is completely backwards to pretty much anyone I put on the machine who was new to it. You're using sit downs. Those machines are go forward, you stop kind of stuff. Like you make the machine go forward that kind of stuff. With this, it's always constantly in motion and you're making the machine stop, which is backwards to a lot of people. And these levers for the hydros, you're talking anywhere between 10 to 15 pounds of pressure. That's like having those little training, you know, spring squeezing things to build your arm muscles up. It's like doing that all day long. The other part that'll also kind of drive you crazy, especially if you're on the sulky, is your way to adjust your speeds is down here on your handle. 
So either you gotta be really good with the machine already or you gotta come to a complete stop, adjust your stuff, always gotta remember to put this in your stop mode to turn it off or you'll never get your machine to start like you might have saw earlier. But yeah, after doing six properties in a day with this, your hands hurt and they hurt bad, man. Big blisters, things like that. And it definitely puts a toll on you. Uh, as far as using it as a walk behind, it's great. I actually prefer walking behind this more than I do the Sulky. Reasons for that, it's a little less taxing on my body. It's more comfortable to walk it than it actually is to ride it. But riding it with the Sulky, you're getting so much more productivity and that's why I did that for so long. But I prefer just kind of taking my time, staying safe and just kind of walking behind it. And when it comes to the machine and a lot of the things I have to knock on this machine, it's also my fault as a buyer for going cheaper and thinking this was gonna be my saving grace when it wasn't. And it's also gonna be a big knock on Encore as a company, which I hate saying that, I hate knocking companies, but I've sent emails when I was having all these problems, never got a response, called, never got a response, and it's a headache. Right through here for your linkage on the uh, hydro pumps themselves for your wheel motor, motors was just a single pin and a small rivet. Mowing a client's property one day, this rivet completely busted off, dropped my hydro, spun my machine around, almost took out my feet with the mower deck, and this handle came in and hit me in the chest so hard. It's little things like that you gotta look for. Don't skip out on everything. That's why I'm not gonna say buy cheaper products. I had to put my own little bolt through here and different lock nuts to keep these in. We'll go through a couple other things on the machine real quick. Two of the other things I really don't like about this machine is the metal chute deflector. Um, I've had nothing but issues with it getting tangled on things. You're gonna hit trees, you're gonna hit little things in the yard you don't see. This thing gets all bent up and mangled up and I've had to re-bend it and shape it. I would love for this just to be a little piece of rubber like everything is then just flip it up and down because then you get the clanking of the metal on metal, scuffing up the paint. Just a bad, bad thing. I wish it was rubber. One of the other things I dislike a lot on this machine, and I do understand it is a smaller machine, I'll bring you over here so you guys can see what I'm talking about. Not only is this a complete mess and a disaster, but it also, they're so thin, it just, it's, it's a horrible concept to me. Um, you have inserts on the inside for the wheel itself. You have inserts on the uh, bearings for adjusting your height up and down, all the spacers. Um, just from the mower being able to bounce up and down like this when you hit roots in a yard and stuff like that, this one right here for the spindle already has a crack in it after might have been a year. It hasn't broke off yet, so I'm not really dealing with it because I don't use this machine that much. But I'm just saying this is the kind of stuff when you uh, go cheaper. You keep going down that process. Oh, this one's five, this one's four, this one's 3,000. Oh, this one's 2,900. You get what you pay for, and this is what I'm talking about. It's all hollowed out. It's a lot chintzier of a material, and it's gonna be a lot harder to do in service. So. Let's go ahead and take this top plate off and I'll let you guys see how the belt system works for the uh, spindles and all that stuff. One of the other things, and I'll tell you what, this is this top deck, this plate to keep all the dust, debris, stuff like that out, is real simple to take off. But let me tell you when it's not simple to take off. When you've mowed three or four properties and you come across the issue of a belt snapping, with the exhaust manifold sitting right on top of this bolt, this son of a buck right here gets so damn hot that you cannot touch it. And I've had that problem happen to me a couple times where I had a belt break or something happened in here that I needed to tighten, get this off, don't have a pair of pliers on me. It's either time to burn your hands up or grab a cloth or a shirt and get it figured out. But that's a horrible location for something that you gotta take off that much. It's gonna be dirty under here, boy. That's not too bad. As you can see, it's been a long time since I cleaned out under this, and it's really nothing, just a little bit of grass debris. <sighs> Blow it out, no big deal. You do have a couple points of grease on the moving parts. I already got a belt starting to fray right here, so I'm glad I looked that off. But we'll go through the motion. Right now, it is not engaged for the PTO. I'm gonna go ahead and hit my PTO lever. I'll give you kind of an understanding of how the machine works. It's basically a single rod that goes all the way back, held in by these cotter pins. And I have had issues with these cotter pins coming out when I wasn't able to engage my PTO. Something else that's happening with this machine a lot is it loses its tension fast. So if you're looking for a machine that has amazing cut quality, do not look at this machine at all. Getting the job done, yeah, cut quality, nope. 
And like I said, you got a couple grease points on here for some of your moving parts. The spindles are extremely easy to change, which have had to be changed twice since I've purchased the machine. Uh, no error on mine. These are sealed uh, spindles, so they're non-greasable, which is good and bad. You get good and bad with it, and I've definitely been getting the bad from having this machine, but let's pop that plate on and talk about the better part of the machine. So dealing with the hydros on this machine is relatively easy. You do have two super tiny hydro pumps, but what do you expect for a 36 inch walk behind? You don't really need much more than that. And as far as service in the hydros is extremely simple. You got a washer nut back here on the back or the bottom that you can drain your fluid out of. And as far as putting it back in, it's as easy as having your single cap up here on the top. Everything just makes life a lot more simple. Simple, baby. This mower also comes with the Kawasaki FS481V, which is actually a pretty decent sized motor for what you're getting out of a 36 inch walk behind. A little bit more would be good, but also I'm not looking to gain anything in wheel speed as far as using it for a walk behind. But I'm gonna have you guys come around over here. I'll show you how easy it is to go ahead and service this motor. And as far as the Kawasaki's go, you guys all know they're all pretty much the same way. All the FS's are definitely gonna have the same air filter functions. This one's relatively clean. A little bit of dust in there from last season, no big deal. But what is this made of, plastic? Real simple to use, you can just get an air compressor and uh, blow all that dust out of there and be good until you need to actually replace it. Uh, spark plug, spark plug wire, two valve, so you're gonna have two of those. And as far as the oil change, everything's all right here. Real easy to get into, no wrenches needed. I could just take this off here. Got your drain plug here. You can just run a, I think one comes with it if I remember, but any silicone clear hose can go right onto this right here and there's a hole cut in the machine to where it can go down to the ground where you can put a pan down there or your friend's mouth whatever you want to fill it up with and just uh call it a day now a lot of these uh, newer ones are going to be spring loaded but this one being a little bit older has a manual mounted uh belt tensioner for your uh, wheel motors and stuff like that for how much tension you need on it it's as easy as twisting this nut pull in this tight now you don't want to do it too tight this is another issue I had and I'm gonna blame it on Encore but I'm not the dealer I purchased this from who I hate this dealer I'm never gonna go there again I'm not buying anything from them because they don't care and they just had lack of intelligence but he was saying you know get a broom handle in here and just torque that son of a bitch down as hard as you can that's why I was snapping belt after belt after belt when I first purchased this mower till I educated myself and you just need enough tension to hold it tight yourself. You don't need to put that extra torque on there, tighten it back down, you're good to go. All right guys, so I just wanted to give you a quick look underneath the mower just to show you what the concept of a 36 walk behind looks like. You got two blades on the bottom. Obviously you can switch them however you want to. If you're talking high lift, gator blades, I really don't even know what I have on here right now. But it's really a simple, easy process. No real big baffles or anything going on under there. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much what you get with a 36 inch uh, walk behind. So guys, all in all, I'm gonna give this machine a D. The only reason I'm not gonna give it an F is because it's made me money. I don't like it, but it's still gonna continue to make me money. It's kind of like broccoli. I don't bro like broccoli at all. I hate broccoli, but guess what? It makes you healthy. If I'm just buying pizza all the time, I'm gonna kill myself. So know what you're getting when you get it. Do your research, that's something I didn't do. I listened to a lot of people that said it's a good way to go. I wish I would've went with a different angle. So all in all, the machine, I'm gonna give a C, all around C. But the fact that Encore owns this company, I'm giving it a D, because that is the worst company I've ever had to work for with the little tiny minor problems and issues I was having, never responding, no customer service. And when you're in business for yourself, no matter what it is, whether it's your dealer or the equipment you use, and you yourself in business, customer service is key. That's how you lose sales, and that's how you lose customers. So thanks for watching, guys. Like always, like, comment, subscribe. And we got more videos coming, I promise. We'll see you.